Um, I might add that uh, in addition to the McCain Institute, which is named for Senator McCain and his family, Senator McCain for many, many, many years was the chairman of the International Republican Institute. And uh, we are fortunate today that although Senator McCain has passed, we have the vice chair of the IRI, Randy Schooneman, and of course the president here, Dan Twining. So please join me in welcoming Dan. And Dan, uh, you can introduce the panel and bring them forward. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dan Twining. I'm president of IRI. Uh, we're working in about 90 countries all over the world. Georgia is one of the most important ones for us. And it's important for a number of reasons. It was very important to John McCain, who was our chairman for 25 years. I used to come here with him when I worked for him during the Shevardnadze era, during the Saakashvili era. And it's remarkable how Georgia, the trajectory Georgia has been on. Uh, since IRI started working here, uh, since those trips with John McCain. And I think we should all take a long view on how much progress this country has made. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the challenges, so this is not to glance over those. Uh, but really, we should reflect, I think, in a very broad strategic sense on the fact that there is a real struggle underway in the world between democracy and autocracy, between countries that respect each other's sovereignty and want to live in a peaceful and secure world and countries that want to subvert and undermine other countries' sovereignty to build new empire spheres of influence, right? I actually don't think we should shy away from the fact that there is a contest underway in the world and that Georgia actually is on the front lines of that contest, uh, not just in a narrow sense with Russian troops occupying the breakaway regions, but in a kind of an ideological, ideational sense that... Uh, there are enemies of Georgian democracy in the world who want this country to fail. Uh, and I think all of us here from across the West and beyond uh, want to double down and help Georgia succeed. We're gonna talk about these issues with a very distinguished panel. Uh, Irakli Kobakidze, the Speaker of the Georgian Parliament. Uh, Justin Mackenzie Smith, the British Ambassador to Georgia. Uh, Giga Bukharia, uh, who leads uh, the European Georgia movement, one of the leaders of that party, and Salome Samadishvili from UNM. Uh, I'm really delighted to invite them to the stage uh, if they want to join me so I don't have to continue this monologue for too much longer. Thank you. Please give them a round of applause. So, um, uh, the speaker will be coming. Um, Georgia has a lot of challenges. I would like to pick up on this. Um, I would love to, though, I must admit, as a visitor to this country uh, from America, I've seen this before, it's actually unhelpful to have just a conversation among Georgians about very narrow issues in Georgian politics. So I'm very hopeful that we can have a big conversation about what's happening in Georgian politics, uh, as you all see it, uh, what that means for Georgian democracy, but also what that means more broadly. This is a very difficult neighborhood, right? Uh, there are three very troubled countries between Turkey, Iran, and Russia uh, uh, in this neighborhood, not to mention Azerbaijan and elsewhere. Um, it, what happens in Georgia is not something we can consider in isolation. There are pressures on this country from abroad, and I think we should pick up some of the geopolitical dimensions of that in this conversation about the future of Georgia. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much for this introduction. First, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the McCain Institute for organizing this, this very important event. And I would like to thank our American friends for their very strong uh, support. We very much appreciate this uh, support and we are proud that uh, we have a very strong strate strategic, strategic partnership which connects us with the United uh, States. As the parliamentary resolution adopted in 2016 says, the United States is the most important strategic, strategic partner of uh, Georgia. And again, we are very much enthusiastic to further strengthen this uh, partnership and cooperation with the uh, United States. I would like to express my uh, respect to Senator McCain and condolences to our American uh, friends 
uh, Senator McCain was a devoted friend of uh, Georgia. He was a very strong politician and a very strong personality. And he was a best example, which was demonstrating that uh, you can really combine your political activities with strong moral uh, principles. And we highly respect Senator McCain for his contribution to global politics and for his contribution to the development of partnership between the United States and our country, uh, Georgia. We believe that Georgia is on the right track. We are progressing in a permanent manner. We are developing, we are developing our democratic system, we are developing our economic systems, and we are developing our international ties. We are improving our international positioning, and again, I believe that Georgia is on the right track, despite the very complex situation that is surrounding our uh, country in the region, but also uh, globally. We are developing again our democratic uh, systems. We have achieved a significant progress in terms of the human rights protection, which is one of the most important aspects of uh, development of any uh, country. And here I would like to once again talk about Senator McCain, and I would like to remember that he was very much vocal against the torture which happened in the Georgian prisons uh, before 2012, and his contribution to the improvement of the human rights situation was also uh, very important. His particular statement played a very important role in this uh, regard. We have a very much improved situation in terms of human rights protection, in terms of judiciary. Judiciary is one of the topics where we get most Criticism from the opposition for different, from different stakeholders, but even in the field of judiciary, we have dramatic improvement, I would like to uh, say, which is evidenced by statistical data, but which is evidenced also by different pract practical uh, uh, figures. In the field of media, we have dramatic improvement. You remember what was the situation. Before 2012, three media channels were fully under the influence of the previous government. Now the media is pluralistic in uh, Georgia, and that is also one of the major achievements of the Georgian government. We are strengthening the role of the parliament. I would like to emphasize this issue as the chairman of the uh, parliament. We are doing it by means of the legislative uh, changes. We have changed the constitution. We are moving to the fully parliamentary uh, system. But also in practical terms, we are is is essentially strengthening the role of the parliament in the Georgian constitutional order. Again, the constitution, the new constitution, will ensure the sustainability of the democratic uh, development of uh, Georgia because, again, uh, with the parliamentary system of government, with the proportional elections, it will be just impossible to establish any kind of autocracy in Georgia in a long-term perspective. You remember that that was the main challenge for Georgia in the 90s, so later on, now it becomes just impossible to establish an autocracy in a long-term perspective in our country, and that's the major achievement of the constitutional reform which we have implemented in the parliament of uh, in the parliament of uh, georgia elections are fair we will have another elections presidential elections which is upcoming now on the 28th of october we will have the last direct presidential elections in the parliamentary uh, system and i believe that also these elections will be um, held in a fair and uh, proper uh, manner. The main achievement of, in terms of democracy is, th is that we have now the strong government and vocal opposition. The situation is very much different before 2012 where we had weak government which was able to keep its positions and powers only by brutal means and now we have a strong government which is fair and which is strong at the same uh, time and the opposition which was nearly absent before 2012, by 2012, is now very much vocal, which is again the major uh, achievement in terms of democratic development of our uh, country. In this situation, it is also very much important to emphasize that uh, Georgia has a very clear foreign policy vision. This vision was also reflected in a special parliamentary resolution. This resolution says that EU integration and NATO integration are the main priorities and goals of our country. And these priorities were even reflected on the level of the Constitution. We have now a special norm in the Constitution which says that different constitutional bodies should do their best in order to promote Georgia's Western integration, Georgia's integration with the EU and with uh, NATO. 
which means that we have reflected this decision of the Georgian people now on the level of the basic law. This decision is not just a pragmatic uh, decision. Uh, this is a value-based decision, not on, only of the government of Georgia, but first of all of the Georgian uh, people. This will is evidenced by different opinion uh, polls, and this decision is also evidenced by the electoral results. The election says that more than 90% of Georgian voters support those political parties which are pro-Western, which is a very important figure. This figure was more than 20% around four years ago, which means that with our consistent efforts, with our strong will to become the part of the European family of nations, Euro-Atlantic family of nations, nations, this support to the idea of Western integration further increases. So that's a very important achievement of the new government. It was more than 20% by 2013. It is less than 10% now in 2018, which is again thanks to the very consistent and strong efforts of the uh, Georgian government to promote a pro-Western uh, policies. Again, in this situation, uh, cooperation with the United States uh, plays a very important role, a crucial role. It would be very difficult for us to survive in this very complex regional environment without the, without the United States uh, support. That's why we particularly appreciate the cooperation with our American friends, and uh, we very much appreciate the friendly attitude of our American friends uh, to Georgia to Georgia, and again, we are very much enthusiastic to further strengthen this cooperation and uh, uh, partnership. Uh, we enjoy very strong cooperation with the current United States administration, and we will do our best to further strengthen this. Uh, these uh, ties, we have uh, negotiations on the free trade uh, agreement, which, is a, which will be a, a very important asset for us in terms of economic development, but also politically, and we are hopeful that this decision will be finally made by our uh, American friends. The Georgia Support Act is under discussion in the uh, Congress. We enjoyed the very strong statements uh, in the Appropriation uh, Act and in other uh, legislative acts of, uh, adopted by the United States uh, Congress. Again, there is a very strong cooperation, and we will, of course, build on this cooperation and further deepen, deepen it. It is very important for us to have a clear policy vis-à-vis -vis the Russian Federation. Uh, our main national challenge is connected with the Russian Federation, that is the occupation of our two historic uh, regions, and of course the cooperation with our Western friends plays a crucial role in this regard. We, we know that it is just impossible to solve all these problems with a short-term perspective, maybe even the medium-term perspective, but we believe that with the strong support of our Western friends and with our consistent policy, finally this problem, this major problem for us, uh, this major national problem will be uh, solved. Now we are pursuing a pragmatic policy vis-a-vis -vis the Russian Federation, which is widely supported by, by our Western uh, friends, and thanks to this pragmatic policy, we managed to essentially improve the stability and security situation in our country, and that is the major, one of the major achievements of the new Georgian uh, government. But uh, we have challenges, of course, we have challenges with regard to the Russian propaganda, we have challenges with regard to anti-Western propaganda, and of course we have to address these uh, challenges. We are going to apply different tools in order to improve the situation in this regard. Again, the situation is improving. I have mentioned the electoral figures, but we should be careful and we should apply uh, new tools in order to counter this, uh, this um, very important uh, problem. We had recently consultations with our friends from Ukraine and Moldova. We are going to establish a uh, joint uh, center, strategic communication center, the main goal of which will be to counter this uh, propaganda issue, and we will also apply other strategic communication tools in order to address the relevant uh, challenges. It is very important for us to have a very good cooperation with our neighbors, and in fact, we have very good cooperation with all the neighboring uh, countries. Of course, the Russian Federation is the uh, exception in this uh, regard. We have good uh, cooperation with Azerbaijan, we have good cooperation with Armenia, we have good cooperation with uh, Turkey. We have a peaceful vision, we have a pragmatic uh, vision, and with this vision we managed again to not only to improve the national stability and security situation, but now we are contributing, positively contributing to the broader regional stability and security, which is again a very important achievement of our uh, country. We 
are also participating in different uh, missions. Globally, in Afghanistan, we have the highest per capita uh, representation, uh, which is a very important contribution from our side and to the global uh, security and uh, stability. And the last point I would like to emphasize is that we should develop our economy. Economy is one of the most important aspects of the national uh, development because if you have a weak economy, you are very much vulnerable. Vulnerable in terms of international positioning, vulnerable in terms of domestic uh, development. Now our GDP per capita is around 4,500. We will finish this year with 4,800 USD, which is a very low figure. If you compare it with the poorest EU country, it is twice less. It means that we should be very much uh, prompt in terms of our economic uh, development. And one more aspect I would like to emphasize is that all the biggest countries surrounding Georgia uh, are facing economic problems also due to the uh, san sanctions imposed by the uh, Western partners. And in this situation, it is particularly important for Georgia to ensure the strong economic support from the side of our Western partners. Again, without uh, prompt economic development, we will have more challenges, and again, it is very much, important, very much important for us to ensure the prompt economic development and to strengthen the economic capacities of our country. We have, of course, our domestic plans, which are quite ambitious in terms of economic development, but again, without uh, the uh, Western support, it will be a bit uh, difficult for us to achieve the ambitious uh, uh, figures. Again, we are on the right uh, track, uh, we believe, and uh, with the Western partners' uh, support, finally, our goals will be achieved. I believe the main goal in terms of international relations is to become the full-fledged member of the EU and uh, NATO. And domestically, it is very much important for us to improve the situation with regard to prosperity, stability, the security. And uh, thanks to the uh, consistent efforts, finally, I believe that all these goals will be achieved. Thank you so much. Lovely. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good. We're going to just do five minutes each, and then we're going to open this right up. So get ready. Justin, uh, the latest in a distinguished line of British ambassadors to Georgia, one who speaks better Georgian than his predecessors. I have it on full authority. How does it look from London via Kurtzenisi? Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Very good to see you again. Uh, a very distinguished line of, of former uh, uh, British ambassadors in Georgia. It's a great pleasure to be here uh, and an honor to be on this uh, distinguished panel. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I must begin, of course, by saying that Senator McCain was a, a lifelong uh, friend of, of the United Kingdom. And uh, together with others, we, we mourn his loss and uh, celebrate the extraordinary contribution he made to the transatlantic friendship that exists today. Um, I remember before I, before I became a, an ambassador, I, I, I asked around a few of my colleagues you know, for advice and, 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 and tips, and uh, I do distinctly remember one uh, colleague saying to me, one thing you must remember is try to avoid being on panels with politicians. <laughs> so uh, I haven't done so well on that today. Uh, I know it is also sensible for uh, serving diplomats to be a little bit cautious, perhaps, a little bit cautious, perhaps, about trying to hand down advice from on high to, to their host countries. I think it's, it certainly wouldn't presume to do that. So perhaps my comments this morning could be seen as those of a, you know, a long-term friend uh, of Georgia, now living in Georgia. Uh, but in a way, a view from the outside world, trying to connect the, the domestic with the international, uh, uh, at least as seen from a, from a UK perspective. I mean, undoubtedly, it is a turbulent time. I mean, it is a, a world upside down, a world upside down. Um, though perhaps, perhaps we should aim off from some of the more catastrophic uh, uh, forecasts, uh, 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 the more doom-laden uh, analyses. I mean, uh, 100 years ago this year, uh, uh, Salome, G uh, Giga, and, and, and Iraqli's predecessors in the Georgian Democratic Republic, they also faced a, a turbulent world, a world upside down. But the situation today is at least 
more, 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 more stable, more predictable, more peaceful, more peaceful in many ways. Uh, and those predecessors certainly didn't have the delights of, of rooms to tell to, to sit in and, uh, and, and, and debate these issues. Because there is, there is much in Georgia that is, is, is very positive, as, uh, as, 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 as others have said this morning, economically, uh, there's, a, there's a good picture in terms of, of economic growth. Uh, I can talk more authoritatively about international political support for Georgia. I think it's as strong as, as ever, and I think that was very obvious over, over recent weeks when we watch the different ways in which the 10th anniversary uh, of the Russia-Georgia war was marked uh, with, with, I think, almost total solidarity with Georgia's position 10 years on, despite every effort uh, of, of the Russian Federation to uh, uh, generate recognition or support from elsewhere. There's also incredible dynamism in Georgia. Those of you that might be visiting uh, uh, for the first time or, or, or haven't visited often before, you'll find enormous dynamism in Tbilisi and, 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 and in other cities as well. And Georgia is, is continuing to, to open up, in my experience, opening up to the outside world. I mean, tourism is the, the most obvious expression of that. Uh, the, the visitor numbers are extraordinary, uh, and I, that has a positive effect. I was in Kazbegi on, on Saturday night and had the unusual experience of finding myself surrounded by uh, a, a tour group from the home counties of, of England. And let me assure you that the ladies of the home counties of England do not travel uh, unless they know absolutely where they are going and they're absolutely confident uh, what they're going to find when they get there. So, so more and more Georgia is integrating and connecting uh, with, the, with the outside world. But you know, accepting that these turbulent times, this upside down world, is going to continue for, for the foreseeable future. You know, what are the things that I, uh, as, a, as a friend, as a, as a, as a diplomat, would, would encourage Georgia to, to keep focused on uh, in order to stay safe uh, and in order to continue to prosper? Now, there's lots, there's lots and lots we could talk about. Um, uh, 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 the, the Speaker, the Prime Minister both mentioned the economy. That's crucial. I was pleased to hear the Prime Minister's focus on poverty uh, eradication, poverty reduction. We could talk about disinformation. That will come up throughout the next two days, I'm sure. We could talk about the conflicts. Uh, but for me, I think there are four areas uh, which I think affect everything else, affect everything else. And a continued focus on them, I think, will, will serve Georgia well. One is uh, the, the EU and NATO reforms. Uh, I think it's more important than ever in this upside down world for Georgia to continue uh, its impressive progress to date on those reforms, even though now the climb is inevitably getting steeper. Uh, maintaining that focus is one way that Georgia will maintain its network of friends internationally as well. That's number one. Number two is to continue the, the, the cross-society efforts to build a country to build a society based on laws, based on laws in which all are accountable to the law and with a modern independent judiciary. Now there's, you know, it's, it's, it's a statement of the obvious, but, but I, I, I say it for two particular reasons. One, you know, this is how the, the, the international investment the, uh, the foreign businesses, the US companies, the Prime Minister talked about are going to come to Georgia is when that rule of law is so clearly demonstrated. And two, as we are experiencing in the UK uh, in our uh, relationship with the Russian Federation around the Skripal poisoning, it is by following the rule of law, methodically, meticulously following the rule of law, that you will defend yourself against the unlawful, against the unlawful, against the abuse of law uh, 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 in an upside down, down world. So a rule of law is a part of uh, Georgia's security and defense. Third area I would briefly mention is 
I agree with the speaker, I agree with the Prime Minister that you know, things are, you know, the, the economy is, is in good shape, there's more to do, but every now and again there's time, it's worth stopping and checking that that development is inclusive. And by that I mean that all the citizens of Georgia feel that they're part of it. And maybe the presidential election time that we're now entering is, is the perfect time to, 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 to ask that. You know, are all citizens of Georgia, in all parts of Georgia, whatever ethnic, whatever national background, fully part of uh, this national project? And then finally, and I, I think this finally is the most important point, for me, education uh, is the top priority. Um, as, as, as many of you know, Georgia is a fantastic rugby playing nation. And I would just love to see Georgian society. The, the Georgian rugby team is, is, is feared the world over for its scrum, the power of its scrum, of eight players pushing together. I would love to see all parts of Georgian society coming together in a scrum to push education. Uh, the kind of relentless effort that we saw in Georgia in qualifying for visa liberalization with the European Union. I think it would be transformative. So in each of these four areas, EU NATO reforms, a society based on laws, inclusive development, education, the United Kingdom will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with Georgia. Thank you very much. Great. Well said, thank you. Um, Giga, this is supposed to be a debate, so I think this begins the debate. Uh, over to you, and please do keep in mind, obviously, lots of Western friends here, so if we can make this a debate that speaks to the Americans and the Europeans, and not just among the Georgians, the rest of us would appreciate it. Please. Thank you, thank you, I'll try. Well, first of all, thank you so much for organizing this event. Now, annually, it's a great opportunity for Georgian political class society to engage with all the old and new friends of Georgia, and I want to particularly thank McCain Institute for doing this. And of course, this is a, just a part of enormous legacy of Senator McCain all around the world, for liberty all around the world, and for my country in particular, which we will never forget, we will always appreciate. So thanks for that again, and uh, uh, a memory of this great man will always stay with Georgian society, I'm sure about that. Now for the debate. Now, Chairperson Kopakide has set the tone. He pulled no punches. So I'm going to accept the challenge, but before I do that, I'm going to agree with him and the Prime Minister, as surprising as it might be for some or for them. Uh, actually, I do agree well, that uh, we have some grounds for uh, optimism, indeed. We had a historic event of getting a visa-free travel to, to Europe, to most of the Europe, which is a very important thing de facto and perception-wise for Georgian citizens to be able to feel, f freely travel in an area where we which, which we think where we belong to, and which I believe we belong to, as Prime Minister has noted. We have moved the military uh, cooperation and assistance from the United States to another level, a very important milestone of delivering uh, 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 something that Georgia needed for a long time, a javelin missiles. This is, this is an important political signal and in substance security aspect. And yes, Georgia, with all respect to our Eastern Partnership neighbors, is ahead of them in many aspects. Yes, we are front runners. Uh, but again, with all respect to our neighbors, it's not hard to be a front runner if nobody else is running, actually, so far. Now, but, but, but it's true, yes. We, Georgia has a functional opposition. Georgia has a media landscape where we have one media, national media uh, uh, outlet, broadcasting outlet, which is not under control of the government, and which is critical editorially of the government. Uh, we have institutions which are much less corrupt or more protected from corruption than of our neighbors and are more functional. These are all good news and we have a fundamental consensus amongst major political parties about our pro-Western choice. And of course we have a public opinion still very strongly behind the pro-Western choice. These are, all, these are all good stuff. But the list of concerns and list of the major threats and the trajectory threats which we see is much longer unfortunately. First of all, do we, we, not only we have 20% of our territory occupied, we have a continuous movement of occupation line deeper into Georgian territory. And I'm surprised that this problem was not mentioned by Prime Minister and by a chairperson. 
This is a huge problem for people who live there because they're leaving, they're losing their, their livelihood. This is a major security challenge which can explode the situation. It hangs as a Damocles sword on Georgia's security every day. We have a huge problem of continuous grave violations of human rights in and across the occupation line with murder and torture and one of this murder of civilian taped on CC camera, a brutal unprovoked murder and no, uh, no punishment done and the Russian occupational forces and Russian Federation have been covering up those who perpetrated this crime. This is a major problem and despite a big change in Western perception of Russia, which was mentioned here after aggression towards Ukraine, Georgia is not part of the high level discussion with Russia. This is a big problem as we have seen. Uh, the progress on NATO uh, uh, membership pass, which always was a problematic, is, is there's a stalemate. Yes, we get good statements, but the reality is that we have stalemate in moving closer to the own membership pass. So we have big problems and uh, most of these problems maybe are not in Georgia's hands directly, but there are certain things which are fully in our hands. And that's where I need to have a quick line of what I believe we need to do and uh, the things that I believe we shouldn't do. We must make sure that we not, do not legitimize pro-Russian forces and pro-Russian narrative inside our country. I believe in freedom of speech for everybody, including Nazis or communists, and including those who are pro-Kremlin. And I don't need people should be put to jail because they are pro-Putin. This is a fundamental uh, issue for me. But I think it's extremely dangerous and morally wrong to treat them as a legitimate partners. They must be treated as political lepra and be ostracized. And unfortunately, what we see is not that. We see a very dangerous development that now for the first time in Georgia's recent history, we have an openly anti-Western pro-Putin party inside the parliament, which the ruling party is treating as a good partner. And this is a big mistake. We see uh, an anti-Western fraction created within the uh, ruling majority, a Stalinist fraction, and we see legislation amended to give them public uh, finances. That's something we need not do. We need not support Russians who are penetrating our media space and our, and our public debate with the idea that foreigners are a threat. We need not give them victories by banning land ownership of foreigners as a gift for those campaigners. And we need not endorse their agenda by protecting family and constitution uh, from the Western threat against our identity. These are all pragmatic mistakes and mistakes which sometimes are more than a crime because that makes them stronger. We need not open a campaign as the ruling party candidate did with a statement that emigration is the biggest threat and Chinese don't die. I'm giving a verbatim quote. We don't have Chinese here in big numbers, first of all. But even if we had to, this is endorsing Russian narrative. We need not endorse Russian narrative that Georgia is to be blamed for the 2008 war, which unfortunately was done by GD candidate now at these elections, GD endorsed candidate. These are all deep mistakes. Yes, and I agree with Prime Minister and with Chairperson, we should be united against that. But this is a problem. When we see a far right or far left pro-Russian groups uh, 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 committing violence live on TV against media, against liberal activists, against minorities, and none of them have been prosecuted and put to jail, and they walk free with, with small fines, this is strengthening Russia's positions in domestic debate, especially since the uh, members of the former government, which, which Mr. Kopakhida so, so, so roundly mentioned, are still in jail six years after. Even those who have won the cases in Strasbourg court. And this is a problem. Georgia should not be the last country in the region who has a former political leader in jail despite winning the Article 18 case in, in, in Strasbourg. And I, I might remind you, Azerbaijan has freed the last person uh, a few weeks ago with the same kind of case. This is a problem, and it's not a problem because of my party affiliation or a personal issue of those. This is a problem for political climate. We need to move on. We need to close the chapter of the history where we had big disagreements, and we need to unite against uh, 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 our values. And by the way, I was listening to the prime minister here, and one year ago there was uh, a previous prime minister. We need prime ministers not to disappear. We had a former prime minister who is now absent from anywhere and he has deleted his Facebook account. This is not normal. The system where chairperson of the party 
is the boss of the prime minister is the Soviet system. That's how communist party operated. And this is the problem, and I'm not trying to score a political point here. This is making us vulnerable. We don't want this prime minister with whom I disagree on many things to disappear tomorrow because this is a not, this is not normal system. We need, and, and I agree with Chairperson Kobach, uh, we have now a working relationship with the parliament. This is the good news, but we need parliament to be stronger. The previous prime minister resigned from his office without ever coming to the parliament for Q&A. He only came for his confirmation hearing. This is not normal. This is making us vulnerable. But to sum up, not to be completely negative, I believe that the fact that Georgian public have managed in this region, with all the challenges, to force its political class to build the institutions which are functional and non-corrupt, and to be a leader in the region, as I said. The fact that Georgian public forced the previous government, the government that I was part of, to concede and be defeated in elections, to be changed in the ballot box peacefully within the Constitution, is a ground for optimism. The fact that this uh, uh, society, despite all the efforts by our northern neighbor and all the missteps of our government, is fully committed to our Western choice, is a fundament for optimism. And I'm pretty sure the Georgian public will deliver its message and deliver its verdict very soon through a free ballot and will keep on the track which we have chosen long generations ago. Thank you so much. Thank you, Giga. Great. Okay, Salome, over to you to round this out, round out this initial picture for us of the political scene in Georgia and the wider region, and then we'll interact for 15 or 20 minutes, please. Uh, well, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to address this important international forum. And um, since uh, Giga was positive and spoke uh, extensively about the international and security challenges facing our country, I will maybe concentrate more um, on the domestic ch challenges. Um, the world indeed does seem to be hanging upside down, especially to my generation of uh, the Georgians, because we belong to the generation of 90s in this country. And what we believed in was, of course, coming to age um, uh, at the frontier of freedom and democracy was that democratic progress in the world was unavoidable, certain, and ensured. And of course, when we look at the world today, um, yes, it was mentioned that there is much less violence uh, in it than 100 years ago, and yet the world does seem to be a confusing place because, of course, the frontier of freedom and democracy as the notion in the world which we are facing has, in fact, disappeared. Uh, because today we are fighting for the liberal values, not only on the fringes of Europe, but in the heart of Europe. And uh, liberal values are challenged today, uh, not only in uh, Tbilisi, Kiev or Istanbul, but also in the Western capitals. So in this kind of, uh, we really could not imagine, I think, uh, you know, as we were trying to lay the foundations for the democratic country uh, in Georgia, that come 2018, um, Russia would be fighting the liberal world and democracy using the tools of democracy on the turf of the democratic countries. So as we are discussing, and there will be a lot of discussion, I suppose, in these uh, two days on the global challenges that the world is facing, I think when we're discussing the challenges facing Georgian democracy, we will see that there are a lot of parallels. And there is a reason why. Because as all the writers or the movie makers know, um, in the end, when you are writing uh, fiction, there are a few plots, variations of which you can use in your story uh, making. And the political fiction is no different. Political fiction is, of course, an invention of Vladimir Putin uh, and the current Russian regime to defy democracy, pretending to be using the democratic tools. And the variations of this plot are the same, whether we are dealing with the managed democracy in Russia, 
whether we are dealing with Russia that is trying to undermine the Western structures which have been, been underpinning prosperity and stability in the West since the Second World War, or whether it's Russia exporting its model of managed democracy to the neighborhood countries uh, like Georgia. So, ladies and gentlemen, at late Senator McCain that we indeed uh, owe a great debt to has said, it is time to tell the truth to ourselves about ourselves and uh, this is what we should try to do here. In 2012, when the United National Movement lost the elections and oversaw the first peaceful transfer of power through the elections in this country, and by the way, I think it was time for the UNM then to lose the elections, this country gained a unique opportunity. A unique opportunity to prove the paradigm of democratic development that first you create a functioning state and then you create democracy or deepen your democracy that this paradigm works uh, right. This was the window of opportunity for us to create what this country needed the most and that was the continuity of states through democratic change. I'm afraid that this window of opportunity has been lost. And when I look at my country today, in 2018, six years later, what I see is another pseudo-democracy, another managed democracy, another typical oligarchic political regime that has been, that has, you know, replaced democracy in the former Soviet space. Um, there was a talk here about the role of Bidzina Ivanishvili and that he, you know, what, what the role he placed in, uh, in the political system of Georgia. So I will not talk much more about it, but only, I can only say that he has discovered a very strange formula defying all the rules of political philosophy and science really for perpetuating his rule in this country because I don't know, you know, Max Weber believed that you can uh, continue charismatic leadership only through the elections or monarchy but in this country, we have uh, the man who holds the power and changes the prime ministers as the placemats uh, while retaining, staying in the center of the power. So what we have today is not really a democracy. It is the political space, which in my view is resembling the space of funhouse mirrors where nothing is really like what it seems. Uh, constitutional changes, which you have mentioned, Mr. Chairman, have been tailored to your political agenda. Uh, media freedom is hanging in this country by its thread, as Rustavi II, the television, which is the only independent TV station today, is still independent, only thanks to, Stra thanks to Strasbourg Court. And as the media, financial, and political resources are mobilized in one hand in this country, what it happens, what it does is really disenfranchises the Georgian voters. Because you agree that in the end, democracy is the right to change those who govern us. And Georgian voters are deprived of this opportunity by the political system which Ivanishvili has constructed in this country. Uh, political fiction which is uh, constructing fun house mirror space and pretending that this is a democracy. On the European integration and NATO, uh, I will say a few words because I know the time is short. What I, when we left the government in 2012, I think what we left behind was not only certain achievements but also the plan forward. Uh, association agreement, DCFTA, visa-free, and I am happy that this has been completed. We have also left Bucharest declaration stating that Georgia would join the NATO one day. Looking at the political agenda, looking forward on Georgia, EU, and Georgia-NATO relations, what we see is, unfortunately, empty political agenda. There is not really there are Brussels, uh, Brussels summit was, um, I'm afraid, the least productive summit as well, as far as political results are concerned. And what it means that Georgia is moving to the, to the West uh, might become increasingly confusing for the Georgian voters who are also exposed to the Russian propaganda, which is trying to basically convince them that they have some kind of choice, that they have to choose between 
accession to NATO and territorial integrity, strong economic relations with Russia or the European Union. And if we do not have the, um, uh, the measurable and uh, important results to deliver for the Georgian voters, I'm afraid that Russian propaganda will be more and more successful. So uh, my final message, I guess, is that if we really want to move Georgia forward, yes, a uh, message to our uh, Western friends and allies is please do continue supporting Georgia's Euro-Atlantic integration. More you can offer to this country, better it is for us and better it is for the citizens of this country. But also, please remind the Georgian government that the success of the liberal reforms and democracy in this country is important not only for Georgia's future, but it is also important for the West and for our allies in the West because today we together face the challenges of the liberal values and success of liberal, liberalism and liberal democracy in Georgia is important today in the West as much as it is in Georgia. And by delivering supportive and yet tough messages to the Georgian government. I think you will be doing also a great service to the Georgian citizens because after all, they are the heroes of this epic struggle that Georgia has been engaged in in the last 25 years to build the modern democratic nation ever since we regained our right um, to have the country that would call our own more than 25 years ago. So thank you for your support and thank you for your attention. Great. Thank you. I really like where you left it, which is that the future of Georgian democracy is tied to the fate of freedom in the world. That democracy cannot be successful in one country where it's under assault elsewhere. And that we are all tied together in this struggle to deliver for our citizens a better future. I would like to open it up uh, and just do a quick round, and I know you want to respond, but if we can just open it up quickly and then come back and just have closing comments, that would be wonderful. Uh, questions, interventions, uh, Edward, please. Edward Lucas from SEPA. I'm just trying to broaden it out a bit. Um, quick responses on what's happening in Armenia. Can Georgia help? Thank you. That was a model of brevity. In the back, uh, there was one back here, please. Who was it? Yes. Yeah, she's got the mic. Wait for the mic. Yeah, thanks. I'm Pata uh, from Georgia's Informs Associates. Um, well, of course, by virtue of the fact, uh, when you listen to uh, representatives of the ruling party, we expect they to talk about the chairman. So while when you listen to opposition uh, uh, leaders, of course, you do expect they to be critical. And that's what we have uh, uh, witnessed. However, to my personal uh, 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 assumption, uh, I've detected a bit of complacency while the chairperson of the parliament was talking about the achievements of this country uh, uh, when it comes to democratic institution building. However, it was Georgia's prime minister at the previous uh, uh, session who said that while he was talking in the context of EU, Georgia's EU and NATO membership, well, he sort of implied that country needs to do much more uh, when it comes to democratic institution building to prepare itself for the membership. So let me ask you, the chairperson, of we have not quite listened to what needs to be done. So my question would be uh, to all, and not only to the opposition leaders, what needs to be done to best counter uh, the Russian malign influence in this country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who else? Yes, here. Microphone, please. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much for all presenters. Uh, my name is Nika Chitadze. I represent International Blacks University. Uh, with your permission, I have a comment and question. Uh, I would like to bring the example of the survey implemented by the International Republican Institute related to the main priorities of the citizens of Georgia. And according to this uh, survey, 42 persons, several months ago, this survey was held in April of uh, 2018. And uh, 42 percent uh, named the first uh, priority for the uh, first problem for the country. It's unemployment, about 24 percent uh, 
as a problem, uh, economic problem, and only 10% of the population of Georgia named the first uh, problem uh, for our country as a problem of the territorial integrity. And in your point of view, what should be done in this case somehow to increase the public awareness about the importance of resolving the problem of territorial integrity and restoration of the peace on two historic parts of um, uh, Georgia and uh, somehow to increase the optimism among the citizens of Georgia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? One more. Okay, Tamar in the front, and then we'll come back to the panel. Please, right here in the front. Thank you very much. Um, we uh, have not avoided the uh, Georgians fighting between each other. Are you, you're uh, not going to change despite that. The, despite the fact that we intended to do so. Uh, but this is fine. This is probably part of um, democratic open conversation. Um, and also it is, um, we have spent the last six years arguing on several issues. Um, one of the issues was whether the people who have committed severe crimes should be um, held responsible or should avoid responsibility just because they represent a certain political group. This uh, was a, a long discussion around Georgia and another discussion that was out there always was uh, who is more pro-European and pro-Western which political party. And there is kind of looks like there is a competition between all the uh, representatives of, of all three political parties who is more pro-Western. And there have been, we have seen years of labeling each other or trying to label GD as not uh, pro-Western enough. But this is, I think that, um, that the answers to these questions are now obvious. My question goes to more global context, which with which you started the conversation with. And um, you mentioned Turkey, Russia, and Iran. And this triangle where Georgia is located and which is becoming more and more challenging region and uh, which definitely has impact of how Georgia develops and how Georgia progresses. There is also one connection that we should make. There is no uh, almost no democracy without uh, in the countries where there is no middle class. There is a very strong connection between level of democracy and the middle class. The middle class is very weak in Georgia. Economy is very weak. I agree with the ambassador that there is some progress, but still very, very weak economy. Taking this into account that, pro uh, that Georgia has reached level of democracy, uh, which uh, is even surprising for the country which has very weak economy and very small middle class. Taking into account that region is becoming more and more challenging and um, U.S. sanctions against Russia, Iran and Turkey are also influencing Georgia. Do the speakers think that Georgia as almost a single loyal partner to United States and to European Union in this region should be getting more support not only political, but also economical. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I want to give you the last word, okay? Because I know you have a lot to say, even though we don't have a lot of time. Yes, okay, so why don't we, okay. Uh, can I start with, can I actually start with Salome, just because, sure. and then we'll just come back in the reverse order. Okay, just please one or two minutes each. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, Actually, there is no competition here on who is more pro-Western in this country. What has really happened in Georgia is that what it means to be a pro-Western political party has lost its meaning thanks to the fact that the Georgian voters punish political behavior that is openly pro-Russian. Therefore, whenever any political party, will it be Georgian Dream or anyone else, asserts that they are pro-Western political party, we have to look at the actual political decisions. And I would suggest to the audience, because there are many foreign friends and they might not be aware, that the Georgian Dream has decided to support in the presidential elections that we will have in one month, former foreign minister Salome Zurabishvili, whose political position which has been elaborated not only in her uh, speeches but also in writing in the book is basically what might eventually be used to undermine not only Georgia's territorial integrity but also its chance to become the member of the NATO. 
So my question is, yes, Georgian Dream declares that it is a political party that supports pro-Western choice for this country. So maybe Mr. Kobachidze can explain how that reconciles with your choice to support Salome Zurabishvili in the presidential elections. And on political shield, I also have a question for Mr. Kobachidze that he can answer in the end. Your political, I don't know what to call Pizina Ivanishvili, I don't know whether he's your spiritual leader or a political patron, or I don't know exactly how to refer to him. But Ivanishvili, in his last television interview, which, by, you know, by the way, was not really watched by many people in this country because people seem to care less and less what he has to say, he has as much as accused the former prime minister of corruption. Do you intend to investigate your former prime minister Kirikashvili on corruption charges, or are there rumors that he has gone to the monastery uh, correct, and actually that will be enough for you um, to accept as um, his repentance? Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Giga. I think it is now. Thank you so much. I'll try to be very brief. First of all, I would like to agree with Vice Chair President Chugoshvili completely. I applaud your criticism of the chairman for introducing too much of a political debate here. I share your concern. We shouldn't, but that's how it happened. Secondly, what I don't understand is why are you concerned of having an opposition who is attacking you from pro-Western positions? That's good. If I would be in the government, I would want the opposition who would attack me for being more pro-Western not the ones who would attack me for being pro-Western. That's a problem. If the mainstream opposition becomes fundamentally competing from different position or being pro-Russian, that's a big difference between us. I prefer to be in your shoes as you are now, and you want something else. That's a problem. Secondly, uh, uh, my small comment with all respect to Justin, dear Ambassador, first of all, I don't share uh, the view that uh, ambassadors should shun panels with politicians. Please participate. But on economic uh, uh, growth of Georgia and progress, we have less than 4% growth in the last six years. With this pace, we will not catch up with the poorest country of Europe in the next 100 years. That's nothing to be happy about. So it's true that we will not catch up with UK for a long time with this growth, but I don't think that motivates your praise in this case. Uh, I'm joking, of course. So that, there's nothing, I mean, before we go to this ideological debate about inclusiveness or non-inclusiveness, first we must have an economic growth to catch up. And um, um, last but not least, you, you mentioned uh, uh, that nothing is, uh, no country can be isolated in this fight, which we are facing for liberty in general and authoritarian, totalitarian regimes and Russia in particular in this region. That is correct. And another huge mistake, which I hope will be corrected, uh, was made by Georgia as a country and government which represented it. When we have decided, and by we I mean the government, because government represents us on foreign stage, not us. When we decided to distance ourselves from Ukraine after Russian uh, aggression to Ukraine, I don't want, I don't know what was the what was the underlying reason. I'm, I'm against any conspiracy theories. I always give a benefit doubt for a better option, but I'm not sure that that incompetence is a better option here. We remember that the concept that this government came into power was that Georgia should not be an issue of conflict between West and Russia. This was deeply flawed concept, deeply flawed. And then we saw a first prime minister after Ukraine uh, invasion of Russia to Ukraine saying after meeting the German chancellor that parallels between Ukrainian and Georgian problem are, uh, are, are false, that we are doing just fine with our dialogue with Russia. This is shooting in its own leg. And mind you, six years after a uh, uh, new government came in, we still haven't had a bilateral prime minister's visit to Kiev. This is a problem which I hope will be corrected and as uh, it has been said several times, and we must conclude with this, uh, despite these sharp disagreements, we are united by the fact that we all know that we cannot afford to make further deep mistakes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Justin, do you want to take the Armenia question? Oh, like in sorry. a minute? No, hold can on. I, no, 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 can I respond to Armenia in one sentence? Okay, you have ten one seconds. Sentence, one ten sentence. seconds. I don't want to sound arrogant. There's something to learn from Georgian reforms, anti-corruption reforms, and mistakes by Armenians. But another important message how we can help Armenia is we had first peaceful transfer of power, good message, but two peaceful transfer of powers are the best message of successful democracy. Thank, Thank you. you. Justin. 
Uh, thanks very much. I wondered if anyone was going to pick up Armenia, because I think it's a fascinating point that Edward uh, raised. Uh, and I think there's an opportunity there for Georgia and Armenia to take steps that will have a very positive impact on stability in this region. Uh, but first and foremost, I think those steps need to be taken by Georgia and Armenia themselves rather than by outsiders. Um, I, I'm just going to pick up on two points, Daniel, if I may. Uh, one, Tam, uh, uh, Tamar's question about does Georgia uh, uh, need, deserve more support? Of course it does. Of course it absolutely does. Political support, economic support. Uh, and, and it's up to people like me and others in this uh, meeting to make that case, and we'll continue to make that case. Our case is made that much stronger, Tamar, if the support that Georgia is already receiving is shown to be having an impact. It's shown to be having a lasting and sustainable transformative impact. And that's what you know, we hope uh, we can help to achieve, what we can hope uh, and help to achieve. And that applies uh, on the security side, but it also applies on rule of law, it applies on education, it applies on all the other areas where there are international partnerships with Georgia uh, as well. And then finally, uh, our friend from the International Black Sea University, I'm pleased he's here today, uh, uh, raised the opinion poll. Uh, I, I think the point about the, the, the response on territorial integrity is an interesting one. I'm not going to address that directly, but I am struck not just by that poll, but by other polls that have been uh, released recently at this apparent disparity between the political narrative and public perceptions. And speaking from the UK, uh, that's something to be wary of. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Speaker, we can't litigate every issue in two minutes, but just a couple concluding thoughts and remarks. Yeah, good. Uh, I have mentioned today that uh, we enjoy a strong government and vocal uh, opposition, which is the, one of the major achievements of uh, the new uh, government. And today you have witnessed how strong I am and how vocal the opposition is and how great our Western partners are. Now, to be even more, uh, to be even more serious, uh, consolidation of the political system is the main challenge for us. We had a very controversial or very complicated, I would say, the parliamentary elections in 2016 with many controversies, radical controversies among the political parties. And now we enjoy much higher grade of consolidation of the political uh, system. We have a quite uh, strong cooperation with different political parties inside the parliament. And that is the permanent progress that we are achieving together with our political um, partners and other political stakeholders in the Georgian political uh, system. Uh, we are on the same page on the most crucial foreign policy issues and the national issues, which is a very important uh, aspect which should be emphasized. We have uh, adopted a joint resolution on the foreign policy priorities, which was very important for us, which was also voted by our colleagues from the uh, uh, UNM and uh, European uh, Georgia. And we have also adopted a bipartisan uh, resolution about the Russian occupation, about Tatozoria Tatunashvili. At least it was very important for us to voice our joint statement about the most important national issues and foreign policy issues and it is just very important to be on the same page on this uh, regard so we are on the right track in terms of the consolidation of the political system and I'm trying also personally my best in order to promote these processes inside the Parliament of uh, Georgia as for the uh, pro-Russian forces represented in the political system of course we have this kind of uh, forces which are more or less uh, influential but again this influence is decreasing uh, permanently. Again, before 2012 and shortly after 2012, uh, there was a higher influence of the pro-Russian political forces in the political system, in, and it had a kind of very good uh, reason, especially before 2012. In this situation, before 2012, the governing party, UNM, was demonstrating uh, itself as the main pro-Western party in Georgia, whereas it was torturing, it was violating human rights, it was robbing businessmen, that was happening on a daily basis. In any situation when a kind of pro-Western party was doing these uh, things and it was perceived by or demonstrated by itself as the pro-Western party, the population, some segments of the population had uh, 
kind of uh, their disagreement with all these uh, facts and the pro-Russian kind of uh, sentiments we are increasing in this situation. Now after 2012, when the ruling party is pro-Western and is democratic, the situation is improving also in terms of weakening of the pro-Russian parties, which is again one of the major achievements of the new government. And because of this fact, in 2013, there was more than 20% support, support to the pro-Russian parties, and now this uh, support decreased to less than 10%. And again, that's, that is thanks to the uh, pro-Western policy and very consistent uh, policy of the uh, new government, and that is thanks to the pro-democratic policy of the new uh, government. Parliament is much more strong compared to the situation even two years ago. And I agree with uh, my colleague Giga Bokeria that we should become even stronger. And we will do it and we will achieve a significant uh, progress within the next couple of, couple of years. And the new constitution will be one of the main guarantor of it because it will move the country to the parliamentary system with a much stronger parliament and with a much stronger positions of the opposition. We have a special guarantees for it enshrined in the uh, constitution. Again, media freedom, just to be very short on it, media freedom is one of the major achievements of the new uh, government. We had the full monopoly of the government over the media system before 2012. And now we have the situation where the opposition enjoys the imbalance in, five, in favor of itself in the uh, media. That's the current situation. But despite the fact we managed to win the elections quite easily because the truth is there. You cannot uh, damage the truth because the truth is there and the population sees how promptly we are developing during the last okay. six uh, years. Uh, last uh, point, Salome Zurabishvili. Yes. Is, will be supported by the Georgian Dream Party in the uh, presidential elections. And one of the major reasons of it was that Salome Zurabishvili is a pro-Western politician and pro-Western candidate with a strong European background. And she will be one of the strong supporters of our EU integration and NATO integration. And that was one of the main reasons for us to support her in these presidential uh, elections. Uh, I did not manage to answer. We'll pick Question, it up at lunch, so, okay. and we'll pick it up Let's over the it. next day and a half. Thank you. Thanks to our wonderful panel. Well done.